Before I begin, I just want to announce that the esteemed uh, management of this establishment has asked me to encourage all of you to smoke at will. <laughs> to perform any unhealthy deed you choose. To laugh or to commit suicide because I am not the mop-up man. Now that I have pleased the president of the Sandra Pompidou, I speak and tell of myself. Please feel free to move more closely to the stage. Be neither ashamed for my sake, nor afraid for your own to look on me. For beneath this mortal shell lie heart and soul just like your own. I refuse to live on charity or secluded from society, and I receive no money for my appearance here. My sole income is derived from the sale of these miniature Bibles, which though barely larger than a matchbox, contain every word of old and new. A quarter, four bits, a dollar bill, let the wise man's words guide your giving. Here, but for the grace of God, go you. I have seven perfectly formed brothers and sisters. In fact, unlike the others with whom I share this stage, I was not born to life this way. Until the age of seven, the sun did smile down upon me as upon all others. That was when I entered this very room beneath the crossroads of the world. It was my dear father who took me here for edification, enlightenment, amusement, those same eternal enticements that bring you yourselves to stand before me on this day. We saw the docks trained fleas and the elephant-skinned lady Carl the Frog Boy, the man from World War III, John Dillinger's death mask, the Lord's Prayer on the head of a pin, and more. There, to your right, you'll see a shuttered door to a room now sealed. That door long ago stood open, and by it stood a sign a feast for the eyes, two bits. I could not imagine what awaited within, but my dear father knew only too well. It's not for us, pal, it's not for us. Some days later, I returned, alone in sinful stealth with my two bits. And my eyes, yes, upon her they did feast, she who had no name and who walked with her face behind her. Thenceforth, lust, like a succubus, grew within me, then blossomed forth from me. The hideous stillborn twin you now see hanging from my side. Look at it long, look at it hard. This is the true face of personal growth. Seven times I, we, married her. She upon whom my eyes did feast. She who had no name. It was to feed the stillborn twin. That's it, miss. Step right up. Don't be afraid. Touch it if you will. Some, some nerves near our shared veins still live. <laughs> Merci beaucoup and all that shit. Uh,
like, uh, I don't know who reads philosophy these days because they, since Heidegger, they all suck. But uh, this is called My Kind of Loving. And here it goes, okay? What is it with you people who don't understand the senseless slaughter of animals? What is it with you people who don't want to wear fur? I want to fuck you in fur. Kill me at Kennedy. That's my idea of foreplay. Bring me his fucking pig-faced mickhead on a silver platter. No, wait. Better yet, Ainsley makes these plates, 22 karat gold and blue cobalt. Fuck the silver, bring me his head on one of those. Wear your diamond seam stockings, 25 grand a pair. I don't give a fuck. Special shoes from Brazil. I'll see you there, baby. I'll see you there. Sete Poalabare. I walked with the coward Christ into the desert beyond defiance. He spoke of the properties of certain stones, not as one expounding might, but as one summoning, uneasily, unsurely, what once had been held clear in mind and close to heart, but long had been let go. Green basalt, lapis, cyanite, these are the stones whose natures can be made to govern the winds that deliver, one to good, one to bad, one to darkness, one to light, red jasper, hematite. The demon stones, therein seek the dividers of destinies in their wrath, carnelian, schist as breeze to soul one to the other and on until his words were done at the end of 40 days and the end of 40 nights I turned away and took him little Christianity never hurt nobody Without breeze, and having forsaken all wisdom, and knowing no poem or human soul can save me, I lie myself down and await whatever God bears mercy and power in measure. Eternal stranger, bear me. Eternal stranger, rise. Eternal stranger, bear me. Eternal stranger, rise. I give myself to you who gather the pieces of me.
this little piece I actually wrote for a publication in France. They asked various characters from around the world to give their reflections on youth. That's when I realized I was really over the hill once they asked you to do that, but uh, here it goes. Uh, for many years, I felt that my youth had been wasted. I spent my adolescence drinking, taking dope, robbing you, and fucking around. When I could have been learning to fluently read Sappho and Thomas Mann in the original. But while I still feel that it would be wonderful to fluently read Sappho and Thomas Mann in the original, I no longer feel that my youth was wasted. For with age comes the wisdom that it all comes down to ashes in the end. Mary Bernard's rendering of Sappho, along with what little Greek I possess, William Trask's rendering of Thomas Mann's De Batrogene. These are enough for me, one, such as myself, who long ago was written off for dead. My youth, as I see it now, was spent as it should have been. I am alive, and as I write this, the pleasant morning of the vast blessing of another day, another breath flows through me. I want now to learn to do the tango so that I can dance in style on the graves of those of my peers, dropping dead around me like flies who lived their youths and their lives properly and salubriously. Men sana in corpore sano, they say, but a sound mind in a sound body is but a plain and pretty flower in a plain and pretty vase. The world is full of such parlor pieces. Fuck them and prepare thy dancing shoes. For having survived my youth, and all that followed, I now enjoy the gentler madness to whose shore I have been delivered, and I look forward to tangling in the grave you, grave, grave you, graveyard with you, my darling, or over you.